you have a decade of experience in entrepreneurship. Like, are you just done learning? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> is that like, that's oh, it? <laughs> never, never. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Gold diggers everywhere are boosting their businesses with Comment Sold. This all-inclusive e-commerce and social selling platform allows you to host engaging live video sales, automate your workload, and get support along the way. The Comment Sold team is offering Gold Digger listeners a free ring light when you sign up for a 30-day free trial. Visit commentsold.com slash gold digger to learn more. This episode is made possible by Tailwind. Create, schedule, and post to Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook, all from the Tailwind suite. Tailwind is offering a special deal for Gold Digger listeners. If you haven't tried Tailwind yet, go to tailwindapp.com slash Jenna to get $30 off your Tailwind subscription. Well, welcome to the show, Miss Kylie Lowe. It is such a pleasure to have you here today. (laughs) I so look forward to these chats we have together and like I have to resist the urge to dig into personal topics just because I'm just hanging out with you in real life like with a cocktail (laughs) you know what I mean right I know I know but this is such a fun way to connect to dig into some of the questions we get and we have and I'm really excited because today we're going to kind of talk about all the things in terms of learning. And I think for entrepreneurs, this is a really hot topic because we are now in control of what it looks like to be a student if we want to remain in that student posture as we go through life, which I highly encourage. And so I'm kind of excited to to demystify some of the language around learning and personal development and, and to kind of talk through what my approach to learning has looked like along the way, which it's been a decade now. So it's kind of crazy to peel back the layers and look at that journey too. So I'm excited to do that with you today. I'm really excited to ask you about your approach to learning these days, because I don't know about you, but I was a very dedicated student and I was the one who was always in the library versus going out and doing social things in college. And I kind of lived and thrived on that reward system of doing a good job in school and learning a lot of things and spitting it out on a test and then getting a good grade for it. Like that was what learning used to look like. But now as an adult out of school, as an entrepreneur, the approach to learning is so different. And like the reward system is way more self-motivated. So I'm just really curious, like what is your approach to learning right now? I mean, you have a decade of experience in entrepreneurship. Like, are you just done learning? No, (laughs) never. (laughs) Is that like, that's it? (laughs) Never, never. You know, it's really interesting. I was actually thinking about this the other day because You know, there have definitely been different seasons in my life where like I am like straight up student and like teach me everything. I'm a sponge. And then there are seasons of my life, especially as an entrepreneur, where I've kind of had to put the blinders on a little bit more and lean into my own intuition or lean into what I think is next. And right now, I feel like I'm kind of in between both of those. So learning is still a huge part of my life. And so Sometimes I laugh because even just last night, I was studying things about parenting and and how to help your child with their vocabulary and things like that, where I laugh because I'm like, we're never done learning. My mom always says, like, I will be taking classes until the day I die. Like, I just want to keep learning. And so when it comes to business, every single week, I set aside a little bit of time to just learn something. And 
it kind of looks a little bit different right now, especially coming out of, of the pandemic and not having, you know, meetups and being with friends in real life or, or kind of having that community in person. And so right now in my life, it looks like the form of audiobooks because they're easier to ingest. It looks like specific podcast episodes on topics I'm curious about. And it also looks like learning in the form of like small courses. Like I am a sucker if I get an ad where it's like, learn this for $47. I'm like, cool, (laughs) teach me. Uh, And so I actually buy a lot of those types of products. One, to just study how people are selling, but two, to see if there's anything I'm missing along the way. So right now my learning looks a lot more digestible just because of the phase of life I'm in. I don't necessarily have the time to commit to massive undertakings, but I definitely, definitely make time each week to learn something new. It's so interesting that you bring up the point of a season of wanting to learn and wanting to soak in new information and understand new strategies and ideas and all of that. And then a season of just trusting your intuition where you don't necessarily need to know what other people are doing strategy wise or what's recommended in this space, but rather what you know to be the right path forward and leaning on the skills you already have. And I think maybe I'm wrong here, but I think a lot of people jumping into entrepreneurship probably don't have a background foundation in business. They maybe don't have that expensive piece of paper that says, okay, you can go and start a business now. Like (laughs) you got this education. And I think that self-education bit, if you are starting in entrepreneurship, gives you that confidence that, okay, you can start a business. You can be an entrepreneur just because you don't have that degree, diploma, and all of that. And so intuition may not make the most sense at the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey, but this personal development and learning in books and podcasts, that can give you the confidence to start in the space. So let's talk about the easiest point of entry to start the entrepreneurial learning. And I think it would probably be like books and podcasts and like the free learning options, right? Yeah. So what's really interesting is so my college experience, I do have a business degree and economics and a communications minors. But what's so funny is that when I went through college, entrepreneurship wasn't even an option for an area of study. It is now. Oh, wow. And so when I went through college, I went through it with a corporate lens. So all of my business stuff was like filed under business administration. And I pictured a very different life. And so it was really interesting because while I do have a business degree and I learned a ton in getting it, the lens, it was almost like if you had like binoculars and you just like rotated like 10 degrees, like I was looking at a very different horizon when I went through college and the way that I learned. And so it's really interesting taking some of those like grounded strategies and foundations and principles and then turning it just a bit to like, how does this apply to me and my business? And I just wanted to make that point because I think it is very interesting now how much more entrepreneurship is accepted and appreciated and celebrated. And so when I started my photography business, I was so grateful to have that business background. You know, in college, I took classes like personal finance, which was like so helpful. My mom actually was just cleaning off her work computer as she retired and found my budget from back in 2011 (laughs) um, and sent it to me. And she's like, I thought you would smile at this. And, you know, I had allocated every single dollar of like cell phone bill and uh, college loans. And it was just really cool to see that. But when I started as an entrepreneur, there weren't as many readily available resources as there are today. There are so many amazing books and podcasts. And if you're here, hopefully you're finding value in what we create and kind of feeling like it's free school in the sense of getting some insight. A few of my favorite books to this day. Jeff Walker wrote this book called Launch. And I remember reading it on a plane while I was a wedding photographer, just starting to understand like how you can sell something online. Like I just didn't understand it. I understood the service-based business. I perform a service, I get paid. But Launch was like a really, really awesome book. High Performance Habits. I really love that book. It's written by my friend, Brendan Burchard. And Drew actually read that book as well. 
And it's just a really affirming book of like how you can build habits into your life that allow you to perform at a higher level. Because guess what? Entrepreneurship does require that of you. And that's really really important to kind of start to acknowledge that habits can make a difference. And another book that was a fun read is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And Ooh, yeah, that's a good I one. love that one just about creative living, because I think a lot of times society tells us that like these crazy outlandish ideas we have or, or these dreams that we hold for ourselves, they're too big or they're too broad or there's too many things in our way. And I felt like that book was almost like a permission slip of like, take this like wild idea and here's what this idea can look like in terms of energy. And, and I really loved that as well. And to this day, like I am listening to the book Atomic Habits and I'll play it while I'm in the shower and poor Coco has to listen because we usually shower together. It's just (laughs) a lot faster. It's like a little car wash, but like things like that, where even if I can just get one idea, I think one of the biggest ways that my approach to education has transformed, and I would love to pass this along to you if you're in the phase of reading books and listening to podcasts, is that they're not meant to be like your Bible per se. If you can walk away with one great idea that you can implement or one piece that resonated that you can take and get results. I'm looking for education these days in my life that gives me that one idea or that one piece of permission or that one gentle nudge to keep moving forward versus looking for the entire blueprint strategy, things like that. I have definitely needed all of those things at different places in my career. But right now I really value like the one thing that I might be missing. I have the same approach. Like I find it really hard going through a personal development or professional development book. And you know how often at the end of each chapter, there will be like, a worksheet or like next steps, like action items. I am not one of those people who can take those, I'm sure, beautifully prepared next steps from a book and like actually go write them down. Like I want to read a book. I want to absorb it. And I want to take the one or two nuggets, but the whole like worksheets at the end of the chapter are intimidating to me. I don't know if that's just me. And I know they're there for a good reason. But I guess I guess I mentioned that to give permission, if you're working through a personal development book, there's still so much to gain from what the author is providing in the text, even if you don't take that book and apply every single principle to your life and business. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't really ingested a lot of business books in the last few years because sometimes I feel like it clouded my judgment or that it kind of like made me doubt like what I believe is my next step. And so I read, I am a ferocious reader. Like I I literally this morning, Drew was like, we need to get up. Coco's yelling in her baby monitor, Dada, Mama. And I was like, I'm almost done with this book. And like, I love to read for fun. And once I started getting super into like all these business books, which I think are really powerful if you use them in the right way, I started having trouble like winding down at night or I started to not necessarily enjoy reading as much as I do. And so I had to put a hard stop on business books for a little while. And I found that Audible works a lot better for me because I can just listen in these little sound bites and just take in a little bit at a time. And so that's been a method that's really worked for me lately. Yeah, audiobooks, podcasts as a form of learning, I think are great because it turns those more idle moments into learning opportunities because who can actually look at their schedule and say, okay, I'm going to carve out an hour today to learn. It's challenging if that's the first jump, but you know, you're going to be in the shower for eight to 12 minutes. So why not pop on? Maybe longer if we're dumping water into little cups for an hour. I don't know. (laughs) What you do in the shower is your your thing. But I do like, I love turning in those little idle moments into opportunities to learn. So, okay. So I think books, podcasts, obviously a great starting point, usually free or cheap, very low barrier to entry if that's where you're going to get started with your personal and professional development. I think the next phase of that would be a course, right? Like a course would be more an opportunity to learn a specific strategy or roadmap where like a book or a podcast might be more about ideas. 
Yes. Yeah. I love courses. I mean, clearly I'm a course creator myself, but I would have never created a course if I had not experienced the personal power of taking one. It's so amazing. So I remember when I took my first course, it was actually a really high ticket course. It was like $5,000. And that was, I mean, I pretty sure I like didn't totally tell Drew the extent of the investment (laughs) because I was just a little shell shocked. But what that taught me, it was one, like I wanted to take a course that I could see how it was built and understand how to put it together. And like, I was taking it for two purposes, the actual course content, but also to like study like, well, how is this done? And how does this work? And is this something I could do? But I have taken many courses in my days, but over the last few years, I've really just kind of narrowed in my focus again to take programs that really have like made a difference. And one of the things that I love about online courses is a lot of them, when you purchase them, you have lifetime access. One of the courses by my business coach, Dean, I've taken that course three times now. And what I love is that every single time I take it, my life and my business is in a slightly different position. And so I kind of take away different things. There's like a section in that course that has like all these different tools and and they're pretty short. They're like, you know, seven to 20 minutes long. And sometimes I just refresh on some of those tools because they're, they're things that I use in my business and in my life. And so online courses, you know, can range anywhere from like $37 to thousands of dollars. And what I would advise doing is really making sure that you understand what is the end promise here. And and good course creators will help for that to be super clear. When we develop our courses, we start with like, what is the end result? For example, for our Pinterest program, like we will teach you how to drive traffic from Pinterest and convert that traffic very thoughtfully on your own site. And so you want to look at like, what is the end result? And then like, is that worth it to you in terms of the level of investment? And one of the things that I really love about online courses is one, a lot of them have money back guarantees. And that really lights a fire under my butt because I'm like, I'm going to give it my all for the next 15, 30, 60 days. If it doesn't work. Okay. But guess what? I've never actually had to refund a course because that incentive of like, let's see, let's go all in on this. Let's prove to myself that I made a worthy investment always has yielded results for me. And so I love online courses. I think they're an incredible tool. I think they can really help simplify, give you strategies, systems, and methods. And I think the best online courses, in my opinion, help empower you to be more of you. They're not trying to get you to turn into someone else or to look like someone else or to do something exactly someone else's way. They give you those systems, those strategies and tools that empower you to do more of the thing that you want to do. So when I think about courses, like previously the term course for me applied exclusively to courses in school, in college, Mm -hmm. where I had the level of accountability to do my work because if I didn't, I didn't get a grade. And Mm -hmm. if I didn't get a grade, then my tuition was all for naught. (laughs) So how do you keep yourself accountable in these courses even now, like how do you stay active with them and that you're applying what they're teaching? Yeah. I smile because I am thinking about (laughs) when I signed up for a course right before I gave birth, not the best timing, (laughs) but what I ended up doing, and it's something that I carry forward and, and try to teach my students as well. As I remember, I've got the course, I went inside of it and I had a calendar And I literally wrote down how long each module was. And I said, okay, if I can just do 30 minutes a day for Monday through Friday for the next four, five, six weeks, I'll finish it. And 30 minutes a day really isn't that much, especially if you are able to integrate it into your life. And so I would be nursing Coco and have my earbuds in, or I'd take her out on a walk or while she was napping. And I made it through that course. And I think having a calendar, having the inside knowledge of like, okay, this one module today is going to take 30 minutes. Tomorrow I can do three smaller modules and having that blueprint where it's like, okay, if I get off on a day, I know what I need to catch up on. But 
But seeing it written down there like that for me was really critical. And it kind of gave me the structure that I need in order to finish. And then just really figuring out, okay, how do I integrate this into my life? How do I make it so it's not one more thing to add on top of the pile of all the other things I need to do? But how can I either take learning with me or you know, give up something for a little while in order to learn something that will change my life. And what I think is so powerful about education is a lot of things you can learn once and you can reap the rewards of that learning for the rest of your life. Like when I look at courses I've taken in the past, I am still getting dividends on that investment because I learned something once and it saved me time or produced results or helped me be more efficient or proficient in something. And that's what's so incredible is that this one-time investment can reap results for a long time if you do actually implement. And I think that's where the real power comes in. For someone listening who may be completely new to the online course space and the options and the access that's out there, what would be a key indicator that it's time for you to take a course in a particular subject or area? So I think there are two parameters that I usually look at. One, do I know nothing and I need to know something? Like, (laughs) am I starting from the bottom of the barrel and I really need to like understand this? Or two, is this an area where I could be better, be quicker, save time, save energy? So I think there are two different places, right? It's the ground zero. I need to like learn this and like get this up and running. And and me not taking action is a sign and a symptom of me not knowing what action to take. Or I'm already okay at this, but I want to be better. I know this is important. I know this is something that I should master. And there have been different seasons where I'm in both of those positions where I'm like, I I know nothing. Teach me everything. Or "Mm, I just want to get a little bit better. Even if I just get 2% better, that's going to actually make a huge difference in the long run. And so I would say really great educators are going to serve you for free. So in the sense of if somebody can get you results from their free content, imagine what it would be like to experience their paid content, to invest, to really get the actual step-by-step. A lot of good educators will help explain the what and the why. So they'll explain why it's important that you do this thing or what this thing is. But a lot of times their paid offers are going to be the how, the actual blueprint, the step-by-step process. And so if they can get you results by teaching you the what and the why, then there's a good chance that investing in the how with that person is going to move the needle for you. It might not always be the case, but choose educators that you resonate with that you feel like show up for you when your wallet is tucked away. And I think that's a really good indicator. And and I've had really good experiences with the paid courses that I've taken because those people had built my trust prior to my investment. If you want to grow your traffic organically, but you don't have a ton of time to devote to that part of running your business, then you likely need a tool that will help you to do it better, faster, and stronger. That's why we love Tailwind on Team Jenna Kutcher. Pinterest scheduling with Tailwind helps you grow your business with more traffic so you can spend more time doing what you love. With Tailwind Create, you're not only automating your pins and sending more traffic to your site, they give you the tools to create with almost done Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest designs tailored specifically for you. Set your logo, fonts, and color palettes one time and Tailwind Create automatically applies your brand style to every design. That's like a major time saver. When your pins are up, you can use Tailwind's detailed analytics to understand what's working for you across every post, every pin, and every moment. If you can only have one tool for your Pinterest strategy, make it Tailwind. Tailwind is offering a special deal for Gold Digger listeners. If you haven't tried Tailwind yet, go to tailwindapp.com slash Jenna to get $30 off your Tailwind subscription. That's tailwindapp.com slash Jenna for $30 off your subscription. 
If you sell products online, this is for you. Comment Sold is an all-inclusive e-commerce and social selling platform that allows busy business owners like you to sell and scale online simply. You know we're all about increasing productivity and discovering the best business hacks on the Gold Digger podcast, so we love what Comment Sold stands for, simplifying your business so that you can scale in style. With Comment Sold, you can host engaging live video sales on social media and your branded mobile app, turn comments into shopping carts, automate your workload, and get support along the way. The branded mobile app is so cool to me. Their team will literally build you an app at no additional cost when you sign up for their business plan. Right now, Comment Sold is offering Gold Digger listeners a free ring light to level up your branded photos and videos when you register for a 30-day free trial. Visit commentsold.com slash gold digger to learn more, start your free trial and claim your ring light. That's commentsold.com slash gold digger. I can tell you that for me, I've known it's time to invest in a course when I'm constantly opening up another tab, going to YouTube, <laughs> typing in how, how? To, use, how to shoot in manual mode on my camera oh. and doing it over and over again. Every time I bring out my little yes. Canon Rebel, and I'm like, you know yes. what? I'm just going to take a stinking course on this yes. thing and I'm going to learn how to do it once and for all and have it ingrained yes. in my brain. So that's yes. usually my sign that it's time. You know what? It's time to just properly learn this in a thought out way. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too, because even as a parent, like we've taken courses online for like sleep training and emotional intelligence for children courses and things like that, where it's like, okay, I know I could probably find this information somewhere, but I don't have time or energy to hunt and peck. I want to like actually learn the step by step. And I know that I'm not going to invest in trying to piecemeal a plan together. And so that's where I think when you hit that place where you're like, I just want to save my time and like get this actual step by step quicker and like see results faster. That's where it becomes really clear. Like, all right, maybe it is time to invest. Totally. Okay. So in the evolution of learning opportunities for entrepreneurs, I think that the next step would be to start thinking about maybe a coach or some sort of one-on-one or group setting where you're not only learning, you have an opportunity to ask and get some like personal mentorship. And this is a question that is constantly brought up Mm -hmm. in the Gold Digger Facebook, the insiders group. It's Should I hire a coach? What kind of coach should I hire? What does a coach actually do? All of these things. And so I would love to take some time to demystify this. Also, just like personally for myself, like, do I, should I hire a business coach? Oh, man, I think this is such a loaded question. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's so nuanced. And so I get asked this question all the time as well. And the first thing I'll ask somebody in response to getting asked this question is what is the end result that you're looking for? Because a lot of times we're not even clear on how to answer that question, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're like, I think I need help. I've heard that people do this thing, but I'm like, okay, why don't we start with like, what do you want to learn? Because you can't pick out a coach until you know what you want to get from that coach. And I think the coaching industry, it can be both wonderful and terrible if we're being super transparent. I think it can be really hard to discern who's legit and who's actually getting the results they're saying and what is that end promise and how is it delivered and what level of accountability will I get and what level of service. And so it can be really confusing as a consumer to try to figure out what does that look like. For me, I think if you can start with the end result first. So let's just say like, I mean, Kylie, do you have an end result in mind or do you want me to come up with a few ideas? Why don't you come up with a few ideas? Because here's, well, here's my view, first of all, of business coaches. I am a person who likes to take action on my own. Like I like to seek out opportunities to learn and grow and understand in new ways. And for me, I feel like if I got a coach, it would just be someone leading me to the water. And then I have to be the one to build the boat and sail across the water, you know? Yeah. And so that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, what can a coach 
implement or help me implement in my business, in my world that I can't seek out on my own. Yeah. So I think for me, when I think about coaches and even just coaches in life, like in sports or whatever that looks like, I think the number one thing is that we just need accountability. Like if we're thinking about hiring a coach, there's a lack of accountability in our life that we think we will gain by hiring one, which I think Mm -hmm. is actually really true. Like when Drew did his like at home health coaching business, most of his clients knew what they needed to do, right? Like we know we need to eat better. We need to move more. But knowing that they were going to get on the phone with him every single week and like review what they did was the thing that actually moved them forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So So that's a good point. The accountability factor. Yes. So I think that a lot of times when we say like we need a coach, we're just lacking accountability that causes us to take action. That would be my first presumption, which could be correct or incorrect. But what I would always say for people, one of my friends actually just reached out the other day. She's like, do you know of any good business coaches? And I was like, well, what is it that you're trying to do? Or like, where do you want to go? And Again, it could either be someone to totally fill in a gap for you in an area where you are just not well-versed, you don't want to become well-versed, you you need somebody to kind of take that off of your plate. Or it could be someone that can maybe see into your business and speak to areas where you're maybe not paying attention or you might need a little more help. For example, this isn't necessarily a coach, but there's a new accountant at the accounting firm that we've used my entire existence of my business. And I told her, I was like, you know, I've never had somebody like actually go through my profit and loss statements with me on a month by month basis. And I think it would be really powerful. I understand things that I was taught in college, but there might be things I'm missing that would really help for me to understand the health of the business and to really just kind of grasp that deeper. That is a need that somebody could fill that, you know, could be a business coach, could be a hired professional. That's a very specific need that I can communicate. The end result is that I have a better understanding of the statements that I'm getting sent every month. So when it comes to a business coach, I think you want to look at, is there something that they're exceptional at that you want to learn and take for yourself? Or do you maybe just need to hire an outsource something that you never want to be good at in the first place. I think people get those two things confused and then the waters are muddied and they're like, I have no idea where to go from here. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's already super helpful in understanding how a coach might function within a business or for an entrepreneur. I think a lot of what I see is people wanting to take their business from a certain dollar amount, a certain number of figures to a higher number of figures. And I think a lot of promises that we see in the coaching space, and forgive me if this is a loaded area that you're not even ready to walk through right now in this conversation. But I think a lot of promises we see from coaches is that we will take you from X amount to six figures or seven figures. And what do you want to caution people around when that language comes up? Because it's so prevalent. Well, first, I don't think anyone should be making money claims. (laughs) It's against the FTC. Uh, And I just think it's, I don't know, I think it's personally a little slimy. And it's definitely something I've fallen prey to as well in the past in terms of my own brand and in terms of like what I've looked at as admirable. And first off, I'd be like, show me the receipts of this. <laughs> like, show me show yeah. me proof of what this looks like. But two, like, how did this actually happen for you? Because it might not be aligned with where I even want to go or what I even want to do. And I think what's really interesting is a lot of the mentors I've taken on in my life I don't necessarily connect with them on all the areas. I don't think you have to in order to learn from someone, but there might be one area where they excel in that I'm like curious about, or I don't understand, or I know I need to improve there. And so I would say first off money claims, I would personally stay away from them. I don't, I don't think it's a really effective way to market. And I don't think it's a really honest way to market. But two, I would look at leaders that are living a life similar to the life you want, because we don't necessarily go into business in order to build X figure businesses. We go into business to gain more freedom, to get back our life. And a lot of people that preach in the way of value in terms of money, 
if you look at their life, their life is their business. And, and maybe that's what you want. I think that's totally cool if that's what you want. But I have found that the best mentors are people that share similar values, that desire a similar lifestyle to me. And those are the people I want to learn from because it's really easy for someone to sit and tell you, here's what you need to do to do this. Here's what you need to do to earn more money. Here's all these things. There have been so many times where people are like, Jenna, you need to do a high ticket mastermind. You need to speak on more stages. You need to do all these things. And sure, while I could do those and those would earn me money, those aren't in alignment with my values, with what I actually want in my life. And so I would ignore the money claims and look for people who walk the walk, who talk the talk and whose life looks similar to the life you want to build because those people are going to understand the balance between opportunities and values and help for you to build something that you're actually proud of so that you don't hit that figure in your bank account and you feel empty so that you don't wonder like, I thought this was supposed to feel different because there's nothing worse than that. I love it when you flip the script on what's (laughs) preached and celebrated. I really love that approach to seeking out a coach or a mentor or a leader, I guess, in any capacity, whether it's free or, you know, thousands of dollars a month to work with this person. If they're not demonstrating the life that you want to mirror as far as time and peace and freedom, then they might not be the right mentor, leader or coach for you. I you always flip the script. It's like classic Jenna, (laughs) classic Jenna advice. Okay. So we've talked about all the ways that you want to cautiously approach coaching or at least smartly approach hiring a coach. Now there are some benefits to having that one-on-one access or even group setting access to a leader or mentor. And so would group coaching, like that type of setting be a good place to start if you're looking for more of that one-on-one and like feedback cycle? I definitely think so. And if you can get into a group of people that are at a similar stage or phase of life or business, I think you can learn just as much from other students as you can from the person you hire. And so I always look for leaders that attract great communities, like communities of people that I want to be a part of. I've actually never done group coaching per se in the formal sense, but I think that it can be a great in-between step between a personal coach and taking a course that allows for extra accountability and that community piece that can allow you to build relationships with others in similar phases so that you can walk through it together and help troubleshoot with one another. And I think some of those relationships can be so long lasting and can be just really become lifelines for you as you continue to navigate this space. So now you're going to need to help me understand because I feel like I've heard the word, I've used the word, I've known the word, but there's so much mystery cloaked around a mastermind. Like even the (laughs) word sounds like this elite thing that you get to participate in or you pay to participate in and then you come out of it and you get to be a millionaire, right? Like that's how it (laughs) works. That's what a mastermind's (laughs) for, right? That's how I feel it's presented sometimes. Like it is this game changing thing that you must do if you want to reach a certain level of success. But I have a feeling that that's not really what it is. I picture like a Rubik's cube of like (laughs) impossibility when you hear the word. Okay. So yes, masterminds feel like this underground thing that people talk about. And so masterminds have actually changed my life. I can say that with the utmost confidence. I joined my first mastermind. It was probably four years ago, four or five years ago. So a mastermind can show up in two ways and you kind of touched on it. One is a paid mastermind and the other one can be like a collective just group coming together to mastermind. So this can be a noun and a verb. So a mastermind is basically when people come together with this collective goal of helping one another, learning and growing together, kind of moving towards a greater goal, income, impact as a collective. The formal masterminds that you find yourself paying for 
generally meet in person a few times per year for a couple days. There's usually structure to the events that the host either brings in guests to teach on certain topics, or they teach their expertise themselves. And there's this collective energy of people just showing up because they want to do better, be better, make a bigger impact. And it's really cool. So when I joined my first mastermind, it's wild because I can actually trace back so much of my success today, not because of the leader or anything like that, but because I finally put myself in a room where people thought the way I thought. And let me explain that. I am very isolated in the sense that, I mean, as we record this episode, I am in a town of 1200 people in Northern, Northern, Northern Minnesota, two and a half (laughs) hours away from a target. Like just imagine that there are not a lot of people who do what I do, who understand what my job is, who understand the pain and the triumph of being an entrepreneur. And so when I joined that first mastermind, I remember just being blown away about being in a room of people who had these like wild dreams for their life, who could openly talk about things like numbers and mistakes and expenses and goals and plans. And I was just like, whoa, like I am not crazy. There are other people like me. And I think that can be really powerful. So I've experienced a high ticket, a paid mastermind that really the best thing that came out of it were relationships. I'm still friends with people that I went through that experience with years ago. I gleaned just a lot of insight, but I was also really able at that time to discern, you know, if I walk away with one to two great ideas and I hold myself to implementing them, I will make this a worthy investment. And I did. Nowadays, I am part of like a quote free mastermind that my friend Brendan Burchard puts on where he literally just invites a whole group of us out to Puerto Rico where he lives. We'll sit around a table and share what our greatest challenge is, what something that is making a difference for us is. We have a text thread that is literally to this day almost daily, even though we haven't met in person since the pandemic. And it's really powerful to be in a group of people that genuinely celebrates one another. And that is, you know, just being there as resources for one another without asking anything, without paying to be there. It's, it's really just kind of become this almost family of support. And so masterminds can take form in any way. During the pandemic, I was a part of this group of women. It was like five of us and we'd hop on Zoom every other week and just connect and talk about business or life or help one another. And so basically mastermind is this collective energy of people wanting to move ahead, be better, do better and help one another get there. And they can take on the form of anything you like. But I will say that It takes the right group of people to allow for vulnerability, to allow a safe space to talk about all the topics and to allow for like actual change to happen. So a mastermind doesn't sound like this super secret, (laughs) mysterious, underground thing. (laughs) Like it doesn't feel exclusive. It sounds like to me it's an opportunity to invite community and conversation over like shared goals and business challenges. And it sounds like a super like positive way to grow and learn in your business. I, I mean, I truly I was like, when do I qualify for a mastermind? Well, it <laughs> is weird because when I became a member of that first mastermind that I paid for, I remember I was on someone's email list and they emailed like, I'm opening up a mastermind. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've ever seen like a public, someone's actually opening one up and I can apply to be a part of it. And there is that level of like exclusivity. And there is, if there's a high level of investment, only certain people are going to be able to be a part of it, which right. can be good and bad. But, you know, I think too, it's, it should be noted that there's a lot of power in just, you know, getting some peers in your industry or friends or people that even are kind of chasing a parallel dream in a different direction together just to have that community. Because I think entrepreneurship can be so lonely and I can literally just trace back these specific moments where my life changed because of the relationships that masterminds have brought for me. And I think that's the biggest key here. 
So we've covered so many different <laughs> options yes. from like starting down to audiobooks or free podcasts all the way up to masterminds, both the noun and the verb. So I know the pandemic has sort of shifted how a lot of opportunities to learn in person or around other people, it's all kind of changed necessarily because of the worldwide pandemic. So what have been some virtual ways that you've seen some great opportunities for learning both personally and professionally? Yeah. One of the things that I actually love that the pandemic brought out in a lot of us is this ability to learn live. I think there is something super powerful because most of my learning was done through pre-recorded courses, which I think is great. But there is like this energy that can happen with virtual events or when you're in a Zoom room or you're, you know, on a live webinar or things like that because I think there is something magical about the aspect of like everyone coming together at the same time, which I underappreciated for a long time until the pandemic hit. And I was like, I just want to be with people. And so that's been really huge. And I would say, you know, whether you decide to host a Zoom room, actually, my phone is going off right now. I started a book club and we do a Zoom once a month. And it's just, you know, my mom, my sister, my sister-in-law and another family that we grew up with. And, you know, just having those like real life interactions that you get to connect with people is huge. And so whether you start your own mastermind or you come together or you lead coaching and you do a little beta group and you see if you can get people results in something or offer your expertise or help, I think that can be huge. One other thing I am obsessed with is my friend, Brendan Burchard, who I mentioned earlier, he started a platform called Growth Day. And it's live coaching once a week from all different kinds of experts. I'm so honored to be on this platform. There's people like Mel Robbins, Dave Hollis, David Bach, Brendan Burchard, Glow Atonmo. I mean, there's incredible, incredible resources going on. And so there's a live coaching session once a week for about an hour where you can jump on Zoom and get coached by these incredible leaders on specific topics. And for me as a coach, it's been incredible because I get to like be with these people. I, I recognize members of the community. I get to answer questions live. But then also as a student, I get to like take in that collective energy in areas that I've kind of avoided for a while. I think personal development is very underrated in the sense of so many of us want these strategies and systems and tools and all of these things, which I think are great. But if we don't get to the root of our own belief patterns or our own limiting mindsets or our own like ways that we're like sabotaging ourselves and our success, I think that we can really limit our potential. So I'm obsessed with growth day just because of the live aspect. You get to just zoom into people's homes. So it just feels like a very like collective group coming together. And so that's a platform I am obsessed to be on. And they actually just released a free trial for it, which I'm pumped about. So if you go to growthday.com slash Jenna, I recorded a little video to explain more about the experience but also there is a free trial for it. And I teach once a month on that platform and I love it. Having sat in on a couple of those growth day trainings, like we have yeah. access to it as the JK team, which is so incredible to have that resource. But I love that it's like half coaching, like you're leading a session on a particular yeah. topic and then there's Q&A. So there's like still that back and forth, like one-on-one -on -one feedback that the whole group gets to learn from. So I, yeah. I've really been enjoying Growth Day just as an individual too. Yeah, I think it's great. And it's really cool too, because it's cool to see all the different leaders takes on the same topic. And so each month we do a theme. And what I love as a student is I'm like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Or when I heard this word, I immediately went this direction, but this person thinks in a new way. And I just think it's really cool to get such diverse ideas and different methods, because if one thing doesn't resonate with you, the next one might. And I think it gives you that permission to start kind of leaning into your intuition a little bit more and trusting your own self in what you need to move forward. And I think that that discernment 
can really help you navigate the education space in any form and in any way. And that's what I really want to invite you to do today is to allow yourself to really lean into your intuition and to discern what is meant for you and what you can let fall away and what that next step looks like and what methods are going to work for you. And I think no matter if you're ingesting a free book or a podcast or you're taking a paid program, when you can start to listen to that little voice, that little nudge that says, yes, this is it, or this is the affirmation you needed. I think that's when education can absolutely transform your life. Jenna, thank you for giving me the opportunity to learn from you for free every time we sit down <laughs> to these conversations. I really hope you know that I am just as excited to ask you these questions as I am to take notes and then go and take them into my own life. So I appreciate well, it. Thank you. This is so much fun. And I love doing these with you. And I feel honored to get to speak into your life and into the lives of all of our listeners. It's literally something that I pinch myself for. And today, before I came out here, I told Coco, mommy's going to go record the podcast. And she goes, podcast. And I was like, oh my gosh. It's just, it's really, it's really a treat and something that I value so much. So thank you for being here. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 